it's yeah, it's a kind of a fun story. I'm a musician as well as songwriter, and um, I'm from Kansas City, which is obviously um, pretty far away from the industry uh, proper in the states. And I was performing one night, and I got a text message from the woman who runs the film commission in Kansas City, and she said that there was a screenwriter in town from Los Angeles who was researching um, for a book that he was writing, and he wanted to go see music, so she was going to send him down, and if I'd met him, to you know be nice to him <laughs> or something. And um, and so we we I met this uh, writer Les Bohem. Um, in a bar in Kansas City, and, and we became very, we get kind of fast friends, and uh, I sent him some of my films, and after he saw my other, some of my other work, he, he sent me an email, and he said, hey, this really reminds me of this sort of anthology of short films that, that he had written um, like 10 years pr prior, right. and it was really because he, uh, he and another producer, this woman, Karen Murphy, uh, wanted to, to develop this anthology and sell it kind of in the, the wild west of the internet when you know, okay. people were still, you know, were trying to populate with content, like at the early stages of people trying to populate with content. And they never really got the right offer, and so he never did anything yeah. with the scripts. And so he sent them to me, and, and it was like 13 short films, and I read them all and, and fell in love with them. I mean, they were just, they were all really kind of creepy and... The kind of twisty. He called them co sort of minute zones, like minute tw minute long twilight zones. Though they're you know they're ultimately longer than that, because um, uh, they kind of all exist in a world where things aren't exactly what they seem. Of course. And I I to told him that I love them, and I asked him if I could direct one of them, and he said you could do anything that you want with them. <laughs> and so I told him that I wanted to direct two of them, and so I put my crew together, and we shot two films in two days, and. Um, uh, and so that's that's kind of two films in two, two days. Two films in two days, and it was great because it really, um, it, it was just easy because I was able to do pre-pro on uh, both films simultaneously. We cast them simultaneously, um, and then so it just really felt like a two-day shoot for one film. And but ultimately, it was two independent projects. Yeah, I mean, it was was it a nightmare to do that, or was it? You said it was easy, but I doubt it. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it never feels like work when you love it. Yeah. Um, but uh, we, and, and Kansas City is a really terrific place to live and work as an artist because there are so many, um, uh, there, we, we can shoot there very cheaply because um, nobody's really caught on that they should charge you an arm and a leg for locations and uh, permits and that sort of thing. And so um, we got one of the, loca the location for repo, we basically got for free. Okay. Um, and it was right across the street from my production office. And, I mean, it was just one of these things where it's just everything kind of fell into place really easily. And um, I, I had two other great producers that were working with me in Kansas City. And um, you know, when you have trusted people around you, it, yeah. you know, it's easy to to put your vision on the screen. So. I know you're keen to talk about documentaries, so sure. I'm going to move on oh, to. We, yeah, we can. Uh, we I'm going to quickly move on to Six yeah. Month Chip, yeah, just great. so we can, because is Six Month Chip also written by Len then? Yeah, um, so Six Month Chip is the second film that was written by Les, and it's about uh, addiction, ultimately. It kind of takes place in a 12-step meeting, mm. like an AA meeting, and the writing is so sharp and um, emotional that I remember being on set, and we did the same monologue about 20 or 30 times because we kind of had a, um, a, like a... a the dolly track in a circle around this circle of people. And so we just kept, you know, we would keep doing the monologue just to get different coverage of our lead actor and yeah. then different coverage of the background um, actors. And um, the actor that I cast is, I love so much. He's such a great, Matthew Leonard, he's incredible. And he nailed it every single time. Um, very little redirection needed to, to happen, but he was so good that I remember the first couple of passes through the through the monologue, I, I started crying behind a monitor because he was he was so he was just so perfectly in tune with the words, um, and um, yeah. So I don't know if that answers the question. No, no, it does. Yeah. So, what was Les's reaction, by the way, when you chose Six Month Chip and Repo? Were they his favorites, or were they the ones who uh, spoke to you? Uh, I think there was probably some, they were all his children. Right. Um, and he was just happy that somebody wanted to make them. So 
Um, and I don't know that he really took me seriously because we, we, were, we had become really good you know, friends very quickly, but at the same time, I'm still uh, you know, a stranger from mm -hmm. Kansas City. Yeah. And, he, and so Les, um, Les wrote uh, one of the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movies, Nightmare on Elm Street 5, and he wrote Taken, which was the Steven Spielberg abduction miniseries, and um, Dante's Peak. I mean, like the guy, his and his parents were like Hollywood royalty yeah. uh, producers and writers, and um, it, so I mean, he's a he's a guy that's got a real track record, and so um, you know, for him to kind of go, yeah, you can do whatever you want with him, and then so I met him in mid October, and December third and fourth we were shooting, so I think he was like he was kind of in awe of the fact that we were able to put it together so quickly. Um, and so in terms of which, which ones you know, we did, I don't think that he really cared um, yeah. that much. But, and he was really cool about, because I had some sort of um, edits that I wanted to make to the script, and, and he was really cool about helping make those edits and, and changes and stuff. And, and um, ultimately, uh, they, both he and Karen, the other executive producer, were so happy with the way that everything turned out that we've been kind of taking both of these around to try to sell the idea as an anthology of okay. sort of like Black mirror -y, you know, shorts. Yeah, yeah. So, um, To pull back from these films specifically, because I know you want to talk about documentary, you were here, was it last year with 45? Last, last year, yeah. The Search for Soul? Yeah. Uh, which was the story of Johnny Stark searching for, uh, yeah. searching to complete his vinyl collection. Yeah. Uh, what, are the, what are the challenges of filmmaker, uh, sorry, I say challenges, the differences uh, as a filmmaker in making a narrative and making a documentary? Um, well, first of all, it's an honor to be among these other documentary filmmakers because these films look amazing. And um, uh, I definitely split my time pretty evenly between documentary and narrative work. And the best way that I can describe it is that narrative film feels like um, you're building something and documentary feels like you're sculpting something out of raw material. Okay. So um, when I started, uh, when I really kind of started my documentary life in earnest, um, one thing really resonated with me was that I, um, as I said, I'm a musician, and so there was a, a luthier, a guitar builder that I used to take my guitars to to get repaired, and he started his life as a banjo repairman, right. and um, uh, or a banjo builder. He he interned under a master master banjo builder who, um, you know, one day after enough times of just putting pieces together, he told the master builder that he wanted to learn to carve a banjo neck mm -hmm. from scratch. And the, the master builder said, well, there's a pile of wood, so go grab a nice, solid, straight piece of wood, and there are the tools, and then you're gonna take those tools and you're gonna get rid of everything that doesn't look like a banjo neck. Right. And that, to me, is what documentary <laughs> filmmaking is, because you go out and you collect this incredibly large body of material, mm -hmm. and you then just have to chip away everything that doesn't look like your story. Right. With a narrative film, you really are doing so much work beforehand yeah. um, to, uh, to, you know, to, get, to get to the point where you've got a storyboard and you've got a shot list and, and there are kind of a, f uh, a finite amount of ways that, that you can put that together, that you mm. can you know, reimagine that. And if you've done your work properly on the front end, it should be a pretty easy process. And then with the documentary, it's really laborious and it's really... Um, tedious right uh, and but I love both equally because they just they exercise a different part of my brain Anthony thank you so much thank for coming you. here today thank Thanks. you thank you guys